Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. This channel was created to promote my self-published masterpiece, The N-Word is No Secret in the Service. I wrote this book after I spent over 10 years as an officer in the United States Secret Service. During this time, I learned what true foundational institutionalized or systemic workplace racism is and how it affects my people. If you would like to purchase this masterpiece, just click the link down in the description. If you enjoy the content and would like to support the channel, please continue to like, share, and subscribe. In addition, if you would like to make a donation, we do have a cash app, which is dollar sign runaway slave 609. Okay, let's cook. So, people, I don't believe in the whole sell crack and hand out turkeys thing. I don't believe in that. I don't care who somebody is, what they did at one time, what they stood for at one time. To me, it's all about what they're doing and the impact that they have and what they're doing in the current time. Because a lot of times people can do things that might have done things in the past. They do things in the future that's so much more impactful negatively to their people that it's just ridiculous. And this dude right here, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a.k.a. Ferdinand Lou Alcinder, he has been one of the most disrespectful, ignorant, sellout black people that we have seen in a while. And again, a sellout black person or somebody who crosses the grain is a very important part in working the system of racism, white supremacy, especially when they are a celebrity. Listen to this guy here, y'all, the hypocrisy that comes out of this dude's mouth and talk about some of the issues and things that happened in the book. And if you have any advice for sportsmen that are out there today, sports people who are saying, Kareem, I have views. I want to share these views, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid of being cut off. I'm afraid of not getting money. I'm afraid of being blackballed out of the sports field that I want to be in. What, what would your advice be to them? I would have to tell them that they have to have the courage to stand up for something that is important to them. Um, yeah, you can uh, avoid... Uh, having to make that tough choice, but at a, at a certain point, there's no place to hide. You either have to stand up for what's right or go along with the program that, uh, that diminishes you. And uh, as a black American, I, I can't go along with a program that diminishes me. I, I have to stand up for what's right. So uh, I'm, I'm encouraging kids and all young people that, that read this to, to stand up for what they believe in and uh, what they see uh, that they can do to make America a better place. A legend and an outspoken advocate for getting the COVID vaccine, six-time NBA champion and Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar famously featured in a PSA that showed him getting the shot. Uh, Kareem, it's an honor to have you join us, and, and thanks for being such a great example on this important issue. Uh, let's jump right to this. Uh, what do you make of Kyrie Irving saying it's not about being anti-vaccine, it's about what feels good to me? What, what's your reaction to that? Well, I, I can understand that he, he wants to do what feels good to him, but uh, what feels good to him can endanger other people, his teammates, their families, and the other people that work in the uh, NETS organization. Uh, if he's going to be around them unvaccinated, uh, he, he's a, a risk. So at that point where he is exposing his teammates and people that he works with to the risk, of infection, he's not being a good teammate, and he has to understand that. Uh, they have to protect themselves uh, to the extent that they can, and uh, masking and, and vaccinations have been proven to be effective uh, to that end. So uh, I, I don't know what he's talking about. So y'all heard him. Here we have one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Somebody who a lot of people know, somebody whose voice is very impactful, speaking out against a young black man who could probably be his grandson, would probably be his grandson, speaking out against a young black man who is standing for something and he's standing for himself. Now, this situation with Kyrie, I made a video about this before because when I first seen, when I first seen it, it, it was just so disgusting. But the situation with Kyrie, people got to understand, Kyrie Irving, is not about pro or no vaccine. This is it, it's not about the vaccine. Because 
Kyrie Irving is a man who's standing for something. He's making a stance for his beliefs. He's making a stance for something that he believes in. I wouldn't care what it was. You know what I mean? With all the, you know, the black men, the weak popcorn shrimp type black male media fi figures, you know, these, these Don Lemons and all these Tyler Perry's and all these other people that black, young black men often see in the media is very powerful and symbolic to see somebody like Kyrie Irving standing in his spot for what he believes as a black man. And then these liberal white supremacists, demons, they go and call this big seven-foot ashy Al Sindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar out again, as usual, to speak against another, uh, out against another black man's beliefs. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, man, he, he's been too disrespectful to my people. He's made very insensitive comments. He, he has become their new go-to coon. Before, I don't want to say that, okay. Before, what they used to do with this old man before he passed away, I don't want to disrespect him. They would go, the liberal white supremacists would go dig up. They would go get John Lewis and make him, force him to make statements against black progress. This is who they used to use before. Now it seems like their new go-to person is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Ferdinand Lou Alcindor. This guy, and, and, the, and the thing about him is, He's still pretty active and he seems to have a lot of energy in what he what he's doing. You know, listen, here's another thing that Kareem, another disgusting thing that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did. Very disrespectful to my people again. Listen. Justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I cannot call myself a champion of civil rights unless I champion everyone's civil rights. Growing up, I had very limited exposure to the gay community, didn't understand it. One thing that was very instrumental in me having more compassion and uh, trying to understand what's going on beyond my uh, experience had to do with the, with the murder of Matthew Shepard in 1998. You know, he was tortured and left to die out in the freezing cold. Why? Because he was gay? It's the same as what happened with Emmett Till. Okay, here we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, seven-foot Ashy Alcindor, being disrespectful, making insensitive comments, comparing the murder of Emmett Till to that of a white homosexual. Uh, homosexual. How do you compare the murder of a young, a young kid, a young black boy who did absolutely nothing to that of a white homosexual. Now, don't get me wrong, people. We don't wish death on anybody. We're not evil people. We don't wish death on this white man because he's a homosexual or even because he's white. That's not what we do. Okay? Or what, homosexual, bisexual, whatever. Nobody wish death on him. But for somebody to come out and be that disrespectful and say that this situation with this boy, Matthew Shepard, is the same as what happened to Emmett Till. That's extremely disrespectful. Anybody that allows us to say it says this means they have no respect for our humanity. If you know anything about what happened to Emmett Till and, and many other people, I've done many other videos about other people as well. It's so mainstream that I felt as though I didn't have to cover the Emmett Till topic, but this is super disrespectful, people. I don't believe in the whole, you know, sell crack and hand out turkeys thing. Once somebody comes this far, like this guy Ferdinand Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and crossing the line, it, it, it's over. I don't have any respect for them. I don't care what they did in the past because what they're doing in the current time is so much more impactful. This negative stuff is so much more impactful in the things that they say to promote confusion to, to other people as he does the work for these liberal white supremacists to downplay our history and things that happened to us and equate it to that of a white homosexual who was killed. Kareem is absolutely disgraceful. He's a disgusting human being. There's it's no coming back. And I don't care who he is. And you know what? Kareem, when, when you really look at it, I don't think Kareem was ever, you know what I mean, for that black movement and for black people. What I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was doing 
is I think when he was younger, he was just riding a wave of strength. You know how it is when you got people behind you or you have a movement behind you, you could act a certain way or do certain things and say certain things like, OK, this is how we doing this, this is how we're going to carry it. But th this this dude, I don't think he was ever about that. You know, at one point he had people like Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. You know, back then the black people were more progressive against white supremacy, racism. There was more of a stronger movement, you know. So I think he just wiggled his seven foot body into something that was popular, that was good to do at the time. And he just rode that wave. In D.C. he had the whole black clique of, of, of the Sunni Muslims behind him. He had that strength behind him when he was in D.C. He was riding that wave. Then he was riding away with the sports. He had Muhammad Ali, other people, you know, saying things and doing things. So he rode that wave. And as soon as this dude called his break, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he went laying up with white women and having, having um, biracial kids. As soon as he called his break, I don't think he was ever about that black progressive stuff. I, I don't think he was ever against racism. I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is one of those people who just want white people to treat him better. That's it. I don't think he was ever, you know, somebody who was against the system of racism and white supremacy, regardless of what it may look like at the time. He had a lot of strength behind him before. Back then, they was a lot more progressive and stronger against this. They wasn't as deceived. So he was riding that wave, you know. But he's coming out, speaking out against a young black man who is an athlete who, like he said, has a lot to lose, who's standing for something that he believes he's standing against tyranny. Right. He speaks out against him. Somebody who's young enough to be his grandson. Yeah, he got his nut. He got his nut biracial son out here stabbing people in the head and doing all kind of other crazy nonsense. He does have another son who's doing pretty well, another biracial son who's like a doctor that's doing pretty well. But I don't know, man, this this dude, this dude, Kareem, has officially become the white supremacist liberals official sock puppet. They go get his big seven foot ashy body out whenever they need him. Just like they were doing John Lewis before to say something and promote confusion to people and, and, and belittle and minimize the history of black people in America. You dare you compare this to something like Emmett Till. Disgusting. This dude is nothing but the white man sock puppet. And people, before you get in the comments saying what he did, he didn't do nothing before. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't believe in the sell crack and hand out turkeys thing like, oh, look, they, they sold crack, but look what they do for the community. That's the stupidest thing that black people ever do. Whenever somebody brings something up about what a black person is doing, they go say, well, in 1970, he was pretty progressive and he stood for, so what? What are he doing now? What is he doing now? I don't know what it is with Kareem. I don't know if they offered him something because he got leukemia or whatever. Maybe they said, we're going to give you, you know, I mean, the adrenal I don't know what they've given him or whatever, what kind of deal he made. But I noticed that sometimes when I see a lot of sick black people, when they get something, they start doing little things or whatever. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I'm thinking he was always like that. You know what I mean? All right, y'all. Easy.